They're here bringing whatever we bring from our weeks, the highs, the lows, and the everything in between, to be resurrected again, to hear good news, to be put back on our feet, to hear words of forgiveness when we have blown it, even again. That doesn't stop God from God's promises to love us, to rescue us, to redeem us, to transform us. We gather together in worship, in song, in prayer, and praise to hear good news, however it comes through us, through to us in this gathering and in this worship time together. God, has ano God anoints, we pray, and blesses all that we say, all that we do. Please join us in the fellowship hall immediately following this service for a PowerPoint presentation on phase two of the interim season, of this interim and transition and discernment process we are journeying together in here at Zion Lutheran Church. Phase two is going to be the mission study small group process. And as I said when I interviewed and when I came, the goal, my friends, is not, the goal of this process is not to call your next pastor. That's not the goal. Calling your next pastor is the outcome. The goal is to gather in community, to listen to God, to listen to each other, and to listen to God's word through scripture, through worship, through service, through prayer, through fellowship, through evangelism, to hear God's mission goals, God's dreams and agenda for Zion Lutheran Church in the upcoming next chapter of ministry. So I will outline a timetable, a projected timetable, typically of how it goes in this process, so that you can know what steps to, expend, to expect approximately when. Again, in the fellowship hall, gather snacks and drinks, and then I'll present that PowerPoint presentation and have any questions and answers that need to be had immediately following. Our worship continues with the rest of the announcements. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, welcome to Worship with Zion today. Please be sure to read carefully through all of the announcements in the colored sheet that you have. Uh, but there are a few items I'd like to draw your attention to this morning. Thank you to Jen Rich for sponsoring our radio broadcast today. Just a reminder that the annual meeting is scheduled for January 30th at noon. There will be a potluck first and then the meeting. There will also be an open forum next week in between services in the fellowship hall, which will allow anyone to ask questions of the materials in the annual report, share good news, or voice concerns. Both of these meetings will have a Zoom option available. If you would like to sign up to join the Zoom, please visit with Sandra or stop in the church office during the week. Our next Youth Progressive Supper will be held on Sunday, J January 30th at 4.30 p.m. This event is open to middle and high school students. And yes, invite a friend. Next Sunday, we are excited to welcome Pastor Wayne Gallipo back to Zion. Wayne is currently the pastor for the St. Dismas congregations in Sioux Falls and Springfield. And he will be here to share about his um, mission and the work they are currently doing. And with that, we begin our worship this morning with our gathering hymn, Jesus, the Light of the World. Um, this song is not found in the red hymnals. Um, you can follow along on the screen or use your bulletin. <laughs>
blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another, beginning with the moment for reflection and personal confession. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you have called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, and lead us, so that we may bathe in the glory of your Son, born among us, and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in this good news, siblings in Christ. In Christ Jesus, I declare to you that your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ, and in inheritors of eternal life, siblings in Christ. Therefore, live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray together. Lord God, source of every blessing, you showed forth your glory and led many to faith by the works of your Son, who brought gladness and salvation to his people. Transform us by the spirit of his love, that we may find our life together in him, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from the book of Isaiah, the 62nd chapter, beginning with the first verse. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her vindication 
shines out like the dawn, and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication, and all the kings your glory. And you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken, and your land shall no more be termed desolate, but you shall be called my delight is in her, and your land married. For the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a young woman, so shall your builder marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, beginning with the first verse. Paul writes, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same spirit, to another, faith by the same spirit, to another, gifts of healing by one spirit, to another, the working of miracles, to another, prophecy, to another, the discernment of spirits, to another, various kinds of tongues, to another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. gospel according to John the second chapter on the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee and the mother of Jesus was there Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding but when the wine ran out the mother of Jesus said to him they have no wine and Jesus said to her woman what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. Jesus said to them, Now, Draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine, 
and did not know where it came from, although the servants who had drawn the water knew. The steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guest had become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed him. This is the gospel of the Lord. God's beloved people. So, why start with this miracle? Why start with changing water into wine? In John's gospel, the first of Jesus, what John calls signs, and the rest of the gospels, and we call miracles, the first sign, the first indication of who Jesus really was and came to do and being was, yes, turning water into wine. Really? That's all? I mean, Jesus' first sign that inspired his students to Believe in him was not healing a sick person, was not bringing somebody back from the dead, was not forgiving outcasts of their sins and giving them a new lease on life, not, it was not even exercising a demon or a legion of demons out of some poor possessed soul. You know, the kinds that are a little more dramatic and the kind that make social media blow up. It was making gallons and gallons of excellent wine, by some estimates, 150 gallons of wine to make this wedding feast last longer. Again, doesn't sound like the kind of game changer that would blow up social media, would it? Like exorcisms or like raising the dead would. Changing water into wine? especially when nobody was really privy to what actually happened? Wow. Sounds kind of surreptitious, doesn't it? I mean, it's not just about Jesus loving a good party either, although by all accounts he did. He did enjoy a wonderful party and, and parties and gatherings like wedding feasts in his day and among his people lasted up to a week, and everyone was invited. Oh, he enjoyed these gatherings. So much to the point he was accused of being a glutton and a drunkard, and often got into trouble for sharing table fellowship with, you know, those kind of people, the wrong people. Changing water into wine, especially when nobody was really in on the moment except the, the servants who were working behind the scenes making sure that everything was running smoothly and efficiently and clockwork at this great wedding feast. But maybe it's not so trivial after all. Or John would not have used one of his signature words signs for it. The other things that John called signs that Jesus did, yes, did include healing the sick. Yes, did include raising the people from the dead. Yes, did include feeding multitudes on loaves and fishes. And yes, did include appearing resurrected from the dead among his shocked, surprised, and amazed students. So yeah, biblically speaking, for John, this thing called signs that he said changing water into wine at a 
wedding feast behind the scenes points to important, meaningful, and reality-shifting, game-changing events. So how is changing water into wine at a small town wedding reception on the pump par with raising the dead, feeding the hungry, walking through locked doors to show scars on his hands and feet and side and proclaiming that death has this indeed been defeated? What is this sign? This behind the scenes, surreptitious, not really discovered until after the fact sign, what was the turning water into wine pointing to? Why is wine so important? Well, let's suggest this. A wedding. Or, you know, other big family celebrations then, as, as it is for many of us now, it was a time for, yes, good wine. The best of wine. The time to spare and spend often scarce money on the rare things of life that were saved up for, for uh, during the year or even for years. A time to share food and drink that was special. For the occasion that helped make the event special, even life-changing, and not just, you know, everyday PB&J sandwiches. Because wine, biblically speaking, was connected with special times and celebrations. It is also a great sign in the biblical narrative of what we call and what we sing, especially when we celebrate Holy Communion, this whole thing about, you know, you've heard it, the heavenly banquet, that feast of all feasts at the ends of time as we as we know it, and when God makes all things new in heaven and on earth, as he joyfully proclaims at the end of the book of Revelation. Here's how Isaiah describes this feast. And you can review this at home during halftime of your favorite playoff game from the 25th chapter. Isaiah describes such, a, such an amazing, elaborate, celebrative feast full of the richest foods and wines, he says this, on this mountain, a Lord of hosts himself will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheath that is spread over all nations. In other words, he will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away tears from all the faces. And the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. The Lord has the final word. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he will save us, that he will make all things new that we have been waiting for and longing for. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Yes, let us be glad and let us rejoice in his salvation. That's how Isaiah pictures it, friends. The end of time. When everything is brought to its fulfillment, when shalom, the peace of God, reigns at last, that end of tears, and a clear manifestation of God's final victory, and culminating in a great feast that all of us are invited to, a feast of, yes, really good meat, the best prime rib that you can imagine, Foods that are filled with fatty, rich, omega-3 fats like the best sockeye Copper River salmon you can imagine at your table and wine better than the best you have ever tasted. And now because this, this sign, this syrup, 
propitious sign of changing water into wine happens in the context of a wedding feast. The celebration of a marriage. And what better picture of a symbol of God's joy over God's people, of God's deep love for people, is this biblical image of a bride and bridegroom. They're coming together, and the delight and rejoicing they share, I mean, this is going to be like a marriage celebration itself. Changing water into gallons and gallons of wine. This is just a sign. Doing what signs do, you know, they point us in the direction to go. They inform us of our destination beyond themselves. Pointing to the biblical promises that God will bring all people to God's own self. That God will pour down God's love and abundance of God's joy and provision and celebration with all people, this is the fulfillment that lies in God's great future that has arrived. It is here already in the very one who changed that water into gallons and gallons of the best wine. Because that fulfillment, friends, that kingdom, that reality, it is here. It has already begun. Because for John, Jesus changing water into gallons and gallons of wine is a way to say, look, pay attention. God's future, the one that we're all hoping for, the fulfillment and the restoration of all things, it has broken in now. And these are pictures, these are signs, these are taste that we can have now, that we celebrate in this life of what is going to come in its fullness. And yes, it looks like a great wedding feast. And yes, it looks like hungry people being fed, sick people being healed, dead people being raised from death, and death itself being defeated. Friends, that age is here now. Encapsulated in the one who is present at that wedding feast and whose presence made it joyful all the more because of this sign of changing water into wine as a blessing on that celebration, as a blessing of that celebration, as a picture of the fellowship and the love and the union God desires to have with you and me now and that you and I can have in this one called Jesus of Nazareth. So how do we participate in this reality? You and I who are already in this new reality, in this new future, because we have been joined by into Jesus' life and death and burial into holy baptism, how do we taste and how do we keep tasting it now? Well, we participate into this new life that we are already in by following Mary's advice, where she says, do whatever he tells you to do. Seek this resurrected life at its source. Seek joy at its source. Seek to know what Jesus asked you and I to do and us as a community of faith to do. Live into this reality that you and I are already in. Friends, this is what discipleship is all about. So follow Mary's advice. As a result of being resurrected, do whatever he tells you to do. What does this look like? Here are some starting points. First slide, please. It's like this, and I need to come down so I can see it with you. It looks like this. Now, some people would rather debate doctrine 
or beliefs or tradition or interpretation that actually do what Jesus said. It's not rocket science, people. Like the Nike commercials say, just go do it. Practice loving a difficult person or try forgiving someone. Give away some money. Tell someone thank you. Encourage a friend. Bless an enemy. Say, I'm sorry. Worship God. Friends, you already know more than you need to know. Next slide. Another way this could, it could look like. And where churches need to transition and transform in so many ways. The church should be seen and embraced as a hospital, a rehab clinic, a place of refuge. The church is not a country club. So let's stop treating it like one, shall we? The person smoking outside the church doors. The woman in, quote, inappropriate clothing, unquote. The man with whiskey on his breath. These are children of God. Not excuses to pass judgmental glances at. Ask them their story. Buy them coffee. Really listen to them. That is the gospel. Not telling them that they, to, they need to, you know, need to get their act together in order to attend a church. Here's the thing, friends. In participating into the life of Jesus like that, as those servants at the wedding, those wedding workers, the wedding coordinators, the chief, the chief steward and those who kept the feast going and making sure the wine goblets were full and food was served, they were witnesses and participants of a miracle. Because, they, because Mary said, do what Jesus tells you. And the cool thing is, friends, as you and I and Zion Lutheran Church together continues to follow Jesus and follow Mary's advice, do what he tells you. Guess what? You may be witness to a miracle. In fact, you may be agents of miracles in people's lives. In Jesus' name. After all, isn't that what the church is all about? What do you think? And God's people said, Amen. the song of the day.
God has made us God's people through our baptism into Jesus the Messiah. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in, in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. By your Spirit, activate within your church gifts of faith, healing, and prophecy. Unite those who profess your name across congregations, denominations, and geographic boundaries. Open our hearts to recognize and celebrate surprising miracles. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your creation reflects your generosity. Bless farmers, migrant farm workers, orchard keepers, ranchers, and all who tend the abundance of the land. Protect food and water sources from destruction, that all can eat and drink and be satisfied. God of grace, hear our prayer. By your spirit, grant wisdom, knowledge, and discernment to those who hold leadership positions at any level. Direct policy makers toward compassionate decisions that build up safe and just communities. Lead all authorities in seeking and serving the common good. God of grace, hear our prayer. As Jesus provided gen generously in a moment of need, provide generous gifts of healing for those in need this day, especially Barb, Harold, Deb, Connie, Richard, Dwayne, and Art. Provide abundantly for all who are hungry or thirsty, all seeking shelter, and all who seek peace. God of grace, hear our prayer. You see us for who we are and you delight in us. Embrace those struggling with self-worth, wrestling with self-identity, or facing significant life transitions. Remind us that nothing can separate us from your love. God of grace, hear our prayer. You bless us through the spiritual gifts of the saints who have gone before us. We give thanks for the life of Martin Luther King, Jr., and all who have modeled the way of courageous faith. God of grace, hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O oh God, we lift these up and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and also with you. Um, you're invited to greet one another with the sign of Christ's peace. You may be seated. In the joy and peace we are given through the cross of Jesus Christ, please consider your gifts to Zion that will strengthen our ministry and mission together for the sake of all in need of hearing of Christ's love and grace for them. You can give online, in the mail, or in person here today. Thank you for your gracious gifts to Zion and your partnership in the gospel of Christ. We continue with our offering hymn. Let us go now to the banquet, number 523.
Let us pray together. Blessed are you, O God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us new beginnings and guide us on our journey. Lead us to your table, nourish us with this heavenly food, and prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Christ, our light. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. As Jesus gathered in that upper room to celebrate the Passover with his circle of friends and students. As the host, he took the bread and broke it to begin the meal. As he broke the bread, he gave thanks, gave it to them and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. During the Passover meal, they remembered and celebrated God's covenant with Israel at Sinai. S remembered in all soberness the sufferings of those during the plagues and the blood of the Lamb. Gave thanks and gave it to them and said, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this to remember me. Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray so that our prayers are fed and taught how to pray, what to be praying about through your teaching prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Siblings in Christ, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, for all things are ready. Communion distribution will be two rows down the center. You take bread at the center, wine at the side, return to your places by the, by the sides. All things are.
body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace and everlasting love and peace. Amen. Let us pray together. We give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all. Strengthen with the richness of your grace in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Siblings in Christ, God who leads you in pathways of righteousness in Jesus' name, who rejoices over you and who calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in today and forever. Amen. The final song. Christ in a weary world, share the good news. Thanks be to God. This concludes our worship service at, with the Zion Lutheran Congregation on the second Sunday after Epiphany. Our organist today was Sonia Kemp. Sandra Anderson cantored the music. Marcy Anders read the scripture lessons. Our worship assistant was Phyllis Gobb, and Pastor Mark Galbraith delivered this morning's message. You can always find our bulletin on our website at zionlutheranaberdeen.org or have a copy of the bulletin sent to you before worship by calling our church office at 225-6755. A recording of today's service will be available following the conclusion of worship on our website, our Facebook page, and our YouTube channel. This morning's radio broadcast was sponsored by Jan Rich in memory of her husband, Gene. If you would like to sponsor a broadcast, please give the church office a call at 225-6755. Thank you for your continued support of this vital ministry. We hope this worship service has been a blessing to you.